Jesus goes to Bethany where his friends are, those who he loves like a family, a second family for Jesus, uh, Lazarus and, and Martha and, and Mary. He went there for that consolation, that human comfort in his humanity because they loved him and they welcomed him and they listened to him and they had great, strong, deep faith in him because of their love for him. And, and it says Jesus loved them, therefore he stayed in that place and he let Lazarus die, therefore he loved him because he was testing their faith and he was going to give them a great gift, a great gift of raising Lazarus from the dead. This is the love of Jesus for this for these, his friends, his closest friends on earth, perhaps, after Our Lady. And uh, so he goes and he goes and he tests the faith of Martha and Mary. And he, he weeps too. He weeps uh, seeing uh, Martha and Mary cry. And so he weeps too because of his love for, for, for them. And he's deeply perturbed as well because of the, the lack of faith in the Jews who, who are doubting him. He, he uh, gave sight to the blind man but couldn't, uh, couldn't uh, save this man from death. Uh, but he has this uh, great reward prepared and for those who had an open heart, those who are, uh, had a soft heart and were, uh, had a good will and who would believe in him. He gave them this reward of their faith to strengthen them, especially Martha and, Martha and Mary after the, this, the resurrection of uh, Lazarus, the earthly resurrection. And so he gives them this, uh, this gift of raising Lazarus from, from the dead. And many became to, to believe in him, to strengthen their faith. And they were in a crisis, crisis of faith perhaps, uh, um, Martha and Mary still did believe in Jesus very strongly because of their strong love for him. And they knew death wasn't everything and that uh, the next life is, uh, is the true life. But uh, they, they perhaps needed a strengthening of their faith. And uh, we, we look at our own, our own life and their own, our own crises of faith and how do we handle them. We handle them the same way Martha and Mary did with that deep love for for Jesus. It is love that carries us through all the crises and storms and tragedies and sorrows of life. A deep love for Jesus, which gives us this faith, strong faith. And so, you know, love is, love is of course, the, 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 the center, centerpiece of our life. To love Jesus with all our heart, soul, and strength. And that gives us a strong faith that will carry us through, through everything. Our focus is on the love of Jesus. This will give us this faith. If we have faith in Jesus, we will. We too will rise. Jesus is the resurrection, and, and to rise is is really to love. We're going to rise from sin. We're going to rise from our selfishness. Rise from the worldly things of this life. Rise to what? Rise to charity. Rise to love God. That's all He's looking for. Not this uh, this intellectual faith and this thing like can prove the existence of God, but a love for Jesus, which is true self. Uh, selfless is, is giving. Love is giving. That's the definition, really, of, of love, to just give, give to everyone and to forget self, forget self-seeking, but to give. And how many ways can I give to my, to my neighbor? And I give to God through my neighbor, always thinking of our neighbors, always thinking of giving, praying, and sacrificing, and setting good examples, and teaching, and, and helping in, in every possible way. This is what God wants us to rise to, rise to charity. And so we're rising to charity in this life. We're rising from our death, the death of our selfishness and sins and uh, ego and, and worldliness. And we want to die to all that and rise to, to the love of God and to the love of neighbor. And this, if we do that, we rise to that in this life. We will rise with Jesus in the, in the resurrection. Jesus is the resurrection in the life. We're not, li we're not uh, thinking about all the things we're going to get in heaven and, uh, and raising our body and having the joys of the senses in heaven, and etc. We're thinking of Jesus himself. He is our joy. He is our resurrection. He is our love and our happiness, and he is our focus. We grab a hold of him here in the, in the, you know, on earth in the Eucharist, and we carry, carry him throughout our life with him, and we will ri rise with him. That is, our, that is our hope, that is our focus, and we do that by loving him. 
and we show our love for him by this self, uh, uh, selflessness, this disinterested, disinterested love, and that's a hard thing. But we have to learn it. We have to learn how to forget ourselves and to give to Jesus, to give to God in this pure love, this pure love, which is uh, uh, um, not self-seeking, but it's seeking God. And we see that, especially if we have sinned. Uh, uh, if we sinned, when we sin, what do we do? We think of uh, um, the suffering we're going to have to endure because of our sins. No, we think of the one we have sinned against the one we should love with all our heart, and we come back to him with sorrow, with love for, for God. And this is how we grow in love for God, by sorrow for our sins, because we have offended him, that perfect perfect contrition. We need to, we need to keep uh, learning to be more and more perfectly contrite for our past sins, because we have offended the one we should love with all our heart. And this this teaches us how to love God really purely, and uh, when we're sorry for our sins because we love for God, we love God, then we will also learn to love Him and giving to Him, giving to Him our obedience and, and our charity and uh, our thoughts and prayers and our thoughtfulness of God, giving to Him our sacrifices and our our faith and our thoughtfulness, and giving to God and being sorry for offending Him. We must. That is what true love is, and that if we don't learn that here on earth, we will we will have to purge away our our lack of pure love in, in purgatory. So let's not do that. Let's not do that. Let's let's learn pure pure love for God. Let's learn pure love for our neighbor as well, doing good to our neighbor for their good, for their sake, not for anything I get back from them, what I can get from them, what I can use from them but to give without expecting anything in return and to give out of the goodness uh, of our heart for their sake, for their benefit. So we give to God, we give to, to our neighbor, and we try to forget ourselves. This is the, the great challenge we have and the great thing we pray for, and, uh, and in this way we'll, we will rise. We will rise in this life and in the next. Thank you.